at the movies. I'm Charles Armstrong. And I'm Charlie Stockman. And today we're going to review some of the hottest films in Hollywood without actually having seen any of them. Let's get right to it, shall we? Our first film is the likely action-packed Born Ultimatum, in which Matt Damon portrays former U.S. secret agent Jason Bourne. Now this movie is probably an edge of your seat thrill ride from beginning to end with all kinds of tension and at least a reasonable performance from Matt Damon at least maybe better I'm gonna go ahead and give this a big uh, a thumbs up probably oh I have to agree Charles this movie is more than likely to have some action-packed scenes and a riveting moment or two plus the sporting cast of I think Julia Stiles and that guy from Breach really adds an extra dimension. Or maybe not. Anyway, I also think this movie probably deserves an overall basically positive review. Next up we have Michael Moore's Sicko, a movie that is probably a scathing look at the American healthcare industry. Now as somebody who's had to deal with HMOs and health insurance companies myself, all I can say is that it is about time, I think. Michael Moore really sticks it to big insurance companies in this movie, or better yet, the US government, with some really eye-opening facts. Right? That's what he does. And he probably does it in a way that's either engaging or humorous. This movie is very likely long overdue, and in my humble opinion, it probably deserves a 9 out of 10. I have to disagree, Charlie. In this film, Moore probably takes an extremely one-sided and overtly heavy-handed view of the subject matter. Now, a topic this important deserves a fair, even treatment, and unfortunately, Moore just doesn't afford it that, I'm assuming. Plus, that stunt that he likely pulls, that confrontation outside of some kind of headquarters place, seems like it's probably going to be in poor taste. I'm going to give this film between a 4 and a 6 out of 10, depending. It's a film whose topic is very important, but one that's just handled the wrong way, I bet. Next up, Paris Je Tame, which I'm guessing is some sort of arty foreign film that is either in black and white or has subtitles, or maybe both. Uh, there's probably a lot of close-ups of flowers with some sort of blurry action happening in the background. And I bet at one point a character is probably diagnosed with some sort of terminal illness. Anyway, I normally hate these movies, but uh, I hate to look uncultured, so I'm gonna go ahead and say four, four, four stars. Charles, this movie would have almost certainly have left me completely confused. Seriously, why are there probably so many shots of everyday things from weird angles? And I'm sure there's some kind of unworldly character who's never quite explained. What's up with that kind of thing? Maybe you would probably call this movie good, but unlike you, Charles, I don't date hipster chicks, and I'm free to say what I want. And I'm saying that this movie absolutely, almost definitely sucked. And now for this week's probable projected box office earnings. Coming in at number one, it's got to be Harry Potter and the Phoenix Chamber, grossing over $46 million. In second place, with around 20 to $30 million, The Simpsons Movie, or maybe The Talking Rat Movie. And finally, in dead last, Cuba Gooding Jr., at around $5 million. Next up, Hot Rod. So this is a Saturday Night Live movie, so this should be pretty straightforward. I'm guessing Andy Samberg plays some character with a unique talent or skill who has to raise a lot of money in a very short period of time, either to finance a family member's operation or save a school, something like that. Um, the plot itself is probably pretty thin, but I'm sure it's adequate to further the sight gags and clever one-liners that are peppered throughout. There's probably a zany celebrity cameo at one point. Oh, and I bet there's a hilarious scene where probably the protagonist gets injured and is all screaming in pain and maybe swearing. You know, and maybe kind of breaking character a little, a la Will Ferrell or Adam Sandler. So overall, probably pretty funny. Going to be a pretty good film. I'm going to give it two, two thumbs out of three. 
Oh, I have to disagree with you on that probable yelling scene, Charles. I mean, since when did likely violence, which is very likely graphic, plus maybe some swearing, become comical? Plus, Sandberg probably ruins it by smiling the whole time. Otherwise, you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, this movie is almost definitely somewhere between Happy Gilmore and Blades of Glory. Definitely deserves some stars. A few of them. Well, that's just about all the time we have here at Seattle Untimely at the Movies. As always, feel free to email us at seattleuntimely at gmail.com. And remember, Seattle, if you see us at the movies, please give us a reasonable synopsis of the movie that you just saw. <laughs> Travel